From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. City employees say that this is the most urban campus that Bozeman has ever had in town. I'm Bill Lee, and I'll tell you how the city is extending their outreach to these folks, and I'll introduce you to one urban camper who shared some tips on how to be a good neighbor out here. The landmark case held versus State of Montana went to trial today, first of its kind in the United States. Alrighty, it's 6.33 on the Tuesday. How are we doing? Monday part two. Monday part two mm, is Monday more like it. Yep. Extended. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. speaking of Monday, lots of claps of thunder and some big lightning strikes. Well, a little, little bit of rain along the way. Uh, yeah. Pleasant. The good news is we're getting these rain showers that are kind of nice soakers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not coming in and just washing away. These have right. been pretty good rains. Right. So. We, we didn't lose our softball game last night. Because you oh. didn't play? Oh. Nope. Standing water on the field. Dang yeah. happen so uh, And Next that time. happens. More to follow. <laughs> Temperatures <laughs> <Something> uh, <laughs> staying into the 40s and 50s this morning. It does look like we see some afternoon thunder showers firing off across the area. Once again, just... Uh, is that me breathing into my microphone? I don't know. Oh, no, I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, thunder I'm laughing <laughs> That was much. a clap of thunder. I don't know. <laughs> uh, daytime highs expected to be back into uh, the 60s and 70s. I can do it, too. It, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's not distracting at all. Uh, <laughs> off and on thunder showers oh, into the bad. afternoon, back into the mid to upper 60s. <laughs> it is going to be pleasant for the next couple of days, if not a little cool uh, for our description. We'll talk more about the chance to dry things out in just a few minutes. Is this thing on? I think it's is me. this on? Uh, yeah. Is that you? Yeah. It's one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's no, what they all yet. say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to start the top at the Bozeman School Board meeting. Yesterday, the Bozeman School Board approved a tentative salary increase agreement at the school board meeting last night. Yeah, at the school board meeting Monday, sorry, the board of trustees voted to approve a two-year agreement with Bozeman Classified Employees Association and the Montana Federation of Public Employees. Now, the district, along with BCEA and MFPE, reached a tentative agreement on a 5% increase to base salary for the 2023-24 and 2024-25 years for classified employees, and that includes food services and custodial services. The parties met to collectively bargain items to compensation and benefits, as well as other working conditions, which results in a... a <laughs> Take it away. Sorry. Addendums to Thank the you. VM of member uh, memorandum of understanding to the current collective bargaining agreement. That agreement effective, by the way, July 1st. Reading's hard. It is. It's <laughs> definitely Monday part two here. <laughs> well, as we all know, living out of a camper, RV, or vehicle is a reality for many people here in Bozeman. And as MTN's Jolie Salee reports, there have never met, been as many urban campers in town before. Yeah, she recently spoke with one urban camper who shared some tips on being a good neighbor in an urban camping site and how the city is keeping our streets clean and safe. Folks are setting up camp all over Bozeman in places like where I'm standing over by Winco. In fact, city employees say this is the most urban campers they've ever seen in town. You know, I just kind of keep to myself, keep my area kind of straightened up for the most part. At least I try to. Zach Jenkins and his dog have been living out of this camper over by Winco for about three months now. Not bad. I mean, we get we get locals that'll drive past, honk their horns and stuff. On Facebook, you can see many folks don't take too kindly to our urban campers. But even so, Jenkins says he still goes out of his way to be a considerate neighbor. You'll, you'll like get a lot less problems if you're not loud and you know, not making a ruckus. I don't really get bothered. The corner down there gets bothered a lot more and they've got a lot of stuff out. Stuff that assistant city manager Kira Peters says isn't allowed. It is not illegal to be unhoused or to be homeless. But she says there are some rules. If you're littering or if you really are parked, you know, in a complete right of way, you're in a bike lane. That is not allowed. You know, like if somebody has a camper set up and then they also have like a canopy that's coming out and then they might have a couch and then they might be almost kind of extending the camper out. That's not allowed either. But even though the city has to set some rules to keep our streets clean, they're also lending a helping hand. Right now, we are in the midst of a cleanup. A street cleanup is what we're calling it. We've had a lot of support and a lot of help, um, you know, not just city staff from different departments, but also people who are out and camping have been very happy to help us clean up. Like Jenkins, who says it's not easy keeping things tidy with all these campers and one trash can at the end of the block. 
but he still appreciates the city's effort to help out. Literally, they said anything you don't want, just leave it out and they'll throw it away. One of the guys work, that works for the hayfield, they come by and cut the grass, so I mean, we get most of the stuff people pay, you know, a thousand bucks a month for. In Bozeman, Jolie Salim, MTN News. Thank you very much, Jolie. Now, people packed a Helena courtroom yesterday for opening statements in Held versus Mon State of Montana. The case brought by a group of kids alleges the state hasn't done enough to protect the environment. It's an interesting story. Mm -hmm. MTN's Tom Buchanan was in court for this first of its kind case to make trial. Montana Judge Kathy Seeley heard opening statements this Monday morning in a first of its kind landmark trial Held versus State of Montana. The case filed against the state of Montana in 2020 alleges that the state has not upheld their constitutional obligation to a clean and healthful environment by investing in oil, gas, and coal development. The suit is backed by the environmental group Our Children's Trust, along with plaintiffs aged 5 to 22 years old. Restoring climate stability will take time, Your Honor. But every ton of CO2 we keep out of the air in their opening statement, the state says that emissions from Montana are too small to make a difference and that the state is more of a spectator in the grand scheme of climate change than a contributor. The state has attempted repeatedly to have the case thrown out, citing procedural issues. Various witnesses brought forth included Maine Ann Ellingson, the youngest delegate at the 1972 Constitutional Convention, Ricky Held, the lead plaintiff of the case, and Stephen Running, a Nobel Peace Prize winning scientist with extensive experience in climate science. A recently passed revision to the Montana Environmental Policy Act, House Bill 971, bans state agencies from analyzing climate impacts and could complicate the case. Additionally, a 30-year-old energy policy was also recently repealed, causing Judge Seeley to dismiss parts of the case relating to said policy. Judge Seeley has made it clear that if the plaintiffs do win the case, she will not order the state to make a change to any policy regarding climate. But a ruling in the plaintiff's favor could have wider implications that could set legal precedent for future decisions to be challenged. The 10-day trial is set to conclude on Friday, June 23rd. We'll be sure to keep you updated on this developing story. Reporting in Helena, Tom Buchanan, MTN News. All right, to 640 now. A horse is a horse. Of, of course, course, of course. Yeah, but it turns out uh, maybe they can be a whole lot more than that. Yeah, our Zach Perry <laughs> saddled up for a session of equine therapy and learned just how strong horsepower can be. The relationship of humans and horses goes back thousands of years. They worked our farms, carried us into battle, and provided companionship. And even after all this time, horses are finding new purpose, this time as therapists. How therapeutic can a horse really be? There's this deep connection that comes from being around the horses and really helping to overcome like internal things that scare you. Tara Shad is the executive director and founder of Hoon Copy Programs in Scottsdale, Arizona, which utilizes horses in therapy sessions. She says horses can help us in many ways that traditional therapists cannot. People that are resistant to going to therapy, they'll open up in the arena with us because again, anytime you have a pet involved, right, that has, they have that calming technique, they have this ability to read and sense emotions on their own. We can really play off of noticing how the animal is responding to them. One purpose for horse therapy is to heal the mind. Tara and her stable of equine therapists work with everyone from children with autism to people dealing with anxiety and depression. Especially when you're working with children with a lot of trauma, they don't trust people, they don't want to share what's happened, but we can really read and interpret the animal's response, the horse's response to, to them. Patients also seek horse therapy to strengthen the body. It can be an excellent form of physical therapy for those recovering from accidents or struggling with diseases like ALS. The movement of the horse, they're actually activating the muscles to work. When you're on a horse, you have to be completely in the present moment. So aware of where your body is so that you don't fall off. And so that's gonna bring this balance and the stability in the present moment, awareness of, of I move this, the horse moves this way, horse moves this way, my body moves this way. Finally, Tara encourages anyone interested in an alternative to traditional therapy to give horse therapy a try and feed the soul. It creates more relaxation, more present moment awareness, more gratitude. Feeling the vibe. 
and the horses benefit too. They get to go out and they get to be with the children and the adults and engage and have this social engagement that's so important and feel like they have a purpose in their life. It seems like this is a very therapeutic for all parties. I took the reins on a session myself and connected with my new friend Jimmy. No relation to our host Jimmy Rhodes. It was a powerful experience. I just want for you to just track and notice what your behaviors are and any thoughts you might have. From a guy who lives in a world of anxiety, mm -hmm. you know, I don't feel like I have anxiety right now. This is a big animal. I would be very traditionally pretty worried and nervous about this. Yeah. So what's going on? Now Jimmy even got a kiss, which is his absolute favorite. We are healing mind, body, and soul by tapping into some horsepower.